am going to be knitting myself a sweater. And it's a design that I have had in mind for a while that I just really thought would be cool. It came about because I was working on a sock design and really liked the way it looked. So this is part of the idea for the sock. And when I slipped it on my arm, <laughs> I thought, wow, this would make a really cool sweater. So, um, so I'm going to go for it. I will show you the basic design. I'm not an artist. So what I want to do is uh, have the, a little cable detail on each, uh, around each wrist, and then a little mini cable going up each side of the arm, and then the ribbing will have some little cables coming out of it. It's fairly simple, um, kind of boxy design. But I realized in making it for myself that anyone can make anything like this for themselves. The first thing, um, well, the first thing I did is take a look at some of the sweaters that I had and which ones I really liked the fit of and kind of took measurements to see if it was positive ease, negative ease, how it fit, how long the sleeves were, that kind of stuff. Um, the next thing I did was I took measurements of basically my neck all the way down to my hips everything around my bust, underneath my bust, um, under my arms, the length of my arms from my, sh you know, from my underarm to my elbow, from my elbow to my wrist, everything so that as measurements on my body changed, I could change the measurements of my sweater. So I know that taking measurements of yourself can be hard for some people. Um, it can you know, it's hard for me sometimes to see how things change, but then it was a good opportunity to just love on every inch of myself because this body carries me and <clears throat> this body carries me and um, keeps me strong, keeps me healthy, and I want to love it. I don't want to hate my body. So I measured it and put it all down on paper. Um, then I decided that I, I wanted to use this same yarn. I absolutely love the color of this yarn. This is Uradel yarn. Uh, Uradel yarns, it's a Shetland wool, and this is their colorway Tormentil Heath. And it's just a really beautiful yellow, uh, tweedy yellow. It's got some, some dark colors in there too. And here's how it looks with the cable. So I've got the basic look for the sweater that I want. I know that I want at least two, maybe even up to four inches of positive ease. I want it to be, well, I'm kind of not sure because I want it to be somewhat fitted, but I also know that I don't wear fitted sweaters. I like them when they're big and comfortable. So maybe around three inches of positive ease. Um, I know the yarn that I'm inspired by. I have a pattern design that I like. Um, so I'm going to start from there. One thing that I like to do is I like to cast on sleeves first, two at a time, and then I knit the sleeves um, and get those out of the way. Because some people say they always get stuck on Sleeve Island where they'll do one sleeve and then um, be stuck waiting to do the next one. I do them two at a time, just like you can do two at a time socks and get them both done. I also like that when you do a sleeve, you're kind of doing a swatch. Like if there's not a major pattern in it that takes a ton of time, then this is a perfect swatch to measure exactly what your gauge is going to be. And knowing your gauge is the next really important thing. Your measurements and your gauge will give you everything you need to figure out how many stitches to cast on, how many increases to go up from your wrist to your shoulder, that kind of stuff. So, um, so another thing when you're, if you're going to be doing something like this is um, it's really nice for for any adjustments in the body. If you have a large chest or a small chest, if you have a back, a larger backside or a larger belly, or your shoulders are wide or your shoulders are skinny, like any of those things can be adjusted by if you have your gauge and your measurements. So I cast it on 64 stitches. Um, my gauge ended up being 30 stitches and four inches, so it's about seven and a half per inch, and 44 rows in four inches, which is 11 rows per inch. So I cast it on 64 stitches so that I would have just about 
two and a half inches of positive ease in my wrist. And I'm probably going to have it come just a little below the wrist because I like it when it comes into the hand a little bit. And this is what I've got so far. So my ribbing, you can see, is actually, it's two by two, but the every, oh, every other row of the knitting part is a twist. One, twi one goes one way, one goes the other way. It's a, little, it's a little one by one cable. And I did that, I think, 12 or 13 rows, and then I started on my cable design, which I've got here. And I'll put this up on Ravelry, or I can email it to you if you're not on Ravelry, if anybody wants this. It's a pretty simple cable design, but I really love the way it looks. I'm almost finished. I have one more twist up here, and then I'll go back to this right here, where you've got the two um, one by one cables, and that's going to run all the way up my arm. So, so far to fit my body with the way I'm, I'm about six inches around the wrist, about nine and a half inches by the time I get to the elbow, and then around 11 inches when I'm up at the largest part of my arm. So, I wanted two to three inches of positive ease, so I'm gonna, I started with about eight and a half inches here, and I'm gonna go up to 15 inches in circumference around the top of my arm. So, I decided to knit about five inches without increasing because that's going to be around this part, which doesn't really need a whole lot of increase. And then I started increasing every four to five rows, so that by the time I get um, into my bicep, I've got the full 14 inches, because I'm largest around the bicep. It's, I, don't, I don't want to wait all the way to the top of my arm before I have my largest circumference. So that's what I'm doing right now. Um, let's see. If you know, for example, I had um, seven and a half inches, or sorry, seven and a half stitches in one inch, right? If I want, um, if I want this to be eight and a half inches, then you just multiply seven and a half stitches per inch times eight and a half inches around, and that's the total number of stitches you would cast on. Um, and then it's the same thing. I know that I want to go up to at least nine and a half inches here, so nine and a half inches times seven and a half stitches per inch is the amount of stitches I will need by the time I get to this elbow. Okay? Then I've got to make those increases over this distance. So let's just say for ease of math that I have 10 stitches here and 60 stitches here. I know I need to increase by 50 stitches over however long this distance is. So if it's five inches, then I want to increase ten stitches every inch. Um, if you know how many rows you have in an inch, then you figure out how many stitches you get within those amount of rows. Um, hopefully that makes sense. It's, it's all fairly simple math, it's just figuring out which number goes where, but if you've got your stitches per inch, and your inches of body measurement, then it's pretty easy to figure out. And if you, if you want to do this and you need help figuring it out, feel free to email me or send me a note, and I'm happy to help you with it. Um, and then the other thing about measurements, I was, I was starting to talk about this when I talked about if, um, if you have a larger backside or a larger chest. One thing that you can do instead of just doing circumference is you can actually do half the circumference, right? So maybe you start halfway around your body and you measure just the front. Maybe your front measurement is um, 30 inches and your back measurement is only 20. Then you know you're going to want extra inches, extra increases up in front as opposed to all the way around, right? Then you don't have a poof in the back and it's tight in the front. It's the same thing if you have a large backside. You can add extra inches just in the back by doing increases um, more on the backside than on the front. So a lot of this stuff is already out there in the internet. Um, I'm just going through what I'm doing for this sweater and if you happen to like the cable and want to put that into your sweater you can. But for now, I am just going to keep on increasing until I've made the total number of stitches, which I think is, um, I think I'm getting to 102 stitches by the time I get all the way around. Let's see. 
106 stitches. I want to get up to 106 stitches and then I'll keep going until it's the length that I want it. I'm probably going to knit these about 18 inches. It gives me a little extra length. Usually you've got at least an inch or two of ease under the arm, so you don't knit all the way up into the armpit. You actually knit a little lower and connect about an inch or two below the pit and that gives you a little movement and it's not pulling up tight into your armpit. So, um, so that should give me a nice long sleeve and a little extra room. So as far as my increases, I'm putting the cable, I want it right along my wrist right here, maybe a tiny bit towards the front so that I can see it going up the outside of my arm. So I've marked off where I want my increases to be so that they fall on the inside of my arm. Um, and I'm doing that um, on both of them so I know I have a right arm and a left arm. Yep, I think this one's the right and this one's the left. I've got it written down so I don't forget. And that way um, I know where to place the increases because it's not they're not exact opposite. It's not that the cable's exactly the opposite side of the increases because I want the cable a tiny bit to the front on both arms. So I've got the increases a little offset. And what I'm doing for my increases is simply um, uh, it's make one right, knit two, make one left, and then it just looks like this as I increase up and I've got a stitch marker in the center so that you can see um, where I need to increase. So I think that's where I'm at now and maybe I'll touch back after I've finished the sleeves and uh, show you starting of the um, sweater. Okay, see you in a little bit. Hey friends, I'm back. I've been doing a bit of knitting and wanted to show you that I have arms. So let's see, this is the right one. And this is the left one. I knit both of them at the same time. And so they're both done. Check it out. Aren't they beautiful? I really love it. I love the way the cable comes, came out. I love the color. I knit them so that they fall a little bit below my wrists and um, did the cable and then continued just the two strips of, of cable up my arm so it will continue as I knit the body. So I think where I left you last, I was around here. Sorry if you hear a little drumming in the background. It's pouring on the tin roof outside. So I was about here and um, you might be able to see on the back side that I started my increases about here and then continued until I was at the widest part of my bicep and then just stayed at that stitch number. I decided I'm going to write a, blo a, blog a blog post to go along with this. So I will have, I'll try and explain everything in there with my measurements and calculations and everything. So if you want to try to knit a sweater to fit, it doesn't have to be this one, you could pick anything. Um, any pattern and try to adjust the numbers to fit your body. So hopefully it will make sense in the blog post, but I'm just going to talk about how I did this one. Um, so yeah, so these are done and they are long enough that when the body is knit to about an inch below my armpit, usually there's one to two inches below the armpit, it doesn't go all the way up, um, I will attach it and then continue up on the shoulders. So I'm really excited. I like how it looks. Um, I had mentioned when I casted these on that I wanted three inches of ease, but in my actual, in the actual body, body of the sweater, I've decided to go for six inches of positive ease. And the reason for that is, um, except for a couple of really lightweight, I mean, summer sweaters maybe, but except for the winter sweaters, I almost always wear an undershirt, um, a t-shirt, and even sometimes a long sleeve shirt over that. So that right there is going to take up two, even three inches of that positive ease and then the sweater is going to feel snug on my clothing. So I decided to add three more inches outside of that. So I'll have, you know, a couple to three inches for clothing and then three more inches. And um, I actually measured a few of my favorite sweaters and they all have eight to nine inches of positive ease. I really like things baggy, especially in the winter. I want to feel... Um, I don't know, like I'm wrapped in a blanket more than tight. I just don't like tight clothing. 
So, I did my calculations with my gauge and the size of my uh, hips at the widest point where I want it to fall. I'm 50, uh, 40 inches, so I added 6 inches to that, got 46 inches, and then calculated the number of stitches that I would need for um, my 7.5 stitches per inch. And then had to take into account that the way I'm doing my ribbing um, is an eight stitch repeat. So I'm doing, um, it's knit to purl two on one row. And then the next row is a cable to a two stitch cable to the right, purl two, then a two stitch cable to the left. So we've got two stitches for the cable, two stitches for the purl, two stitches for the other leaning cable, two stitches for the purl, so it's eight stitches. So to make that look even all the way around, I wanted to make sure my total cast on stitches for my body was a multiple of eight. So I did my calculations and then came up with the multiple of eight, and I don't have that amount right in front of me, but it'll be in my um, blog post. And here's what it looks like so far. <laughs> I kind of just kept on going. You can see where I did the ribbing, and then I dropped two of the cables and kept going with the other so it was eight cable repeat not just an eight stitch repeat but an eight cable repeat um, I dropped two then kept going with six of the cables then dropped two kept going with six right and I went about an inch doing it like that then I dropped two more and went kept going with the next four all the way around and now I've just gotten to the point where I've dropped two of the last four, so six of those cable repeats have been dropped, and I'm going to go probably about an inch and a half to almost two inches longer with this one. So it's um, it looks like a bar graph that's going up like this, and I really love it. I think it's going to look really good, and I think that by the time I get that last set of cables as high as they're going to go, it'll be hopefully just a little bit below or right at my waist. Um, and at the same time as I'm doing this, I also calculated um, the circumference around the smallest part of my waist and the length between that point and the widest part of my hips. So then I have uh, the number of stitches I need at the widest part, my cast on, and then the number of stitches I'm going to need for the smaller part of my waist and the distance I have to get there to that smaller number of stitches. So um, I'm going to be doing decreases over, let's see, I didn't decrease in the ribbing, I started decreasing after that. So it ends up being decreases over, I think it's about 7 inches, again it'll be in the blog post. I'll need to decrease by about 44 stitches. So um, every, right now, every 6 rows, I'm doing a 4 stitch decrease, and that should get me to my decrease before I hit that smallest part of my waist. And I'll have just a little bit of a decrease. I'm not decreasing the full amount because I have a nine inch difference between the widest part of my waist, sorry, the widest part of my hips and my waist, and I don't want it to go like this. You know, I don't want it to be a really drastic like that. I want it to just be kind of a soft in. So I'm not decreasing the full amount. I think I'm gonna be decreasing, um, let me see, I have it in here. Yeah, so um, I'm at 46 inches for my hips. I'm going to decrease to 40 for my waist um, instead of 37. If I were decreasing uh, the full amount, the full um, 9 inches plus the 6 inches of ease, I would end up being 37 inches, but I'm not going to decrease the full amount. Then, once I've decreased for the waist, I will increase out a bit more for the bust to get to 30, or sorry, 43 total inches around, and then just continue that up until I attach my sleeves. So right now I'm just doing the decreases for the waist and continuing my little ribbing design. Once, that little, once I drop that final set of cables, I'll just continue in the round and stocking it. So that's where I am for now. So you can see the design that's coming out. I've just dropped these two, and I'm doing knitting across. 
and these two are the last two cables. And you can see I did put in a uh, lifeline just in case I didn't like this design, but I think I'm going to like it. All right, I'll check back in a little bit. Hello, everyone. I am finished my sweater and I love it. It's cozy. It's going to be 30 degrees in the 30s this weekend, like one degree Celsius. So I'm really excited to wear it this weekend. So last time I talked to you guys, I had just started on the body. So let me tell you what happened since then. Let me put my hair up so you can see it a little better. Yes, I'm totally wearing llama pajamas because it's Friday morning and everybody's sleeping in because it's a teacher work day. So I'm not getting out of my pajamas. <laughs> but I want to tell you what, what else I did. Um, so last time I talked to you, I was working on the waist. I uh, have everything that I could possibly think of, I put it in the blog post. So you can read through how I did the measurements, how I did the math, all that stuff. Um, I finished the decreases for the hips, or sorry, from the hips to the waist, and you can see that a little bit here in the silhouette of the uh, sweater. I did most of that while I was listening to the first debate, um, and I realize now after going through a number of debates and presidential elections while I knit that my gauge changes while I knit when I listen to those. Um, and so I was actually doing things with more flair instead of knitting as tightly as I usually do. <laughs> uh, and my gauge changed. So instead of having seven and a half stitches per inch, I had seven stitches per inch, which meant that I now had three extra inches in diameter at my waist. So instead of having it come down to 40 inches, it was 43 inches, which is the diameter I wanted for my bust. So I could either rip back all of this, which ended up date being, I did the calculations around 21,000 stitches, or I could just move on. So I moved on. Um, instead of making increases for the bust, I just left it at the number of stitches I had and tried to keep the same gauge. Uh, and that's something that you just can't, that's nothing you can handle. You could try your best to keep the same gauge, but if things change in your life and you're you're knitting a little tighter or a little looser, it just happens. So every so often you have to stop and check. Luckily with this, it didn't really make a big deal. Um, so I did the decreases for the waist and then I just kept, kept knitting without any decreases until it was high enough um, that I was ready to attach the arms. There is, um, I think it's Elizabeth Zimmerman has what's called the 8% rule for how many stitches to set aside for the underarm. And um, it was the, the basic mathematics is 8% of the stitches of your body, which for me would have been 18 stitches on each side because I had 300 stitches in the body. But I had a sweater that I knit that was almost exactly the same. It was the same gauge, same kind of yarn and feel, and I'd put aside 24 stitches for that one and it seemed like it worked. Um, that's just what was recommended for that pattern. So I just decided to go with 20, kind of split the difference and keep it even. And I put 20 stitches aside on either side of the body that matched up with where I did the, the, uh, the decreases for the hips. So um, I had kept a stitch marker um, where those decreases were and just carried it up as I was knitting. And then I put 10 stitches on either side of the stitch marker. Then I did the same thing with the underarm. Where the decreases were, I put 10 stitches on either side. Um, and I and put that on a spare length of yarn and put it to the side. Then I attached my arms, so knitting around and picking up, knitting around the arm, keeping the cable going up the shoulder, and continued knitting around. I did um, three decreases in a row at, at the beginning to kind of bring it in a little bit from, for the shaping of the chest, and then I did a decrease, raglan decreases, uh, every other row as I was knitting. And I just kept going, doing it that way, until this pattern got a little too close to the decreases for me. I think there were maybe three stitches left, and I didn't want to decrease into the pattern. 
So I started adding a stitch on this side of the pattern and taking it away on the back side. Um, so I just kind of shifted it over a little bit. I only had to do that for maybe four or five rows. So it wasn't a huge big deal and I'll come close so you can see what it did. Hopefully you can see there's just right there a little bit of a shift. But if I hadn't told you about it, you might not have noticed it. So it's, it's not a huge deal. It was just enough to keep this cable going straight up the arm without um, the decreases going into the cable. So once that was done, just a few times, I put the, I had the sweater on two 40 inch needles, working the front side and the back side, and um, that way I could put the whole thing on and not worry about it coming off the needles. And I have a picture of that in the blog post. And it seemed like it was fitting well and it was about as high as I wanted it to go up in the front. And so that's when I started doing the um, increases for the back. I did short rows to bring it up a little bit in the back so that when I put my sweater on, it didn't choke me in the front. I had a little more space in the back for, you know, the, the spine. I put some markers right about the center of the collarbones and started the first short row to there and then decreased them as I went. I did a total of, I think it was nine, it's in, it's in the blog post. Um, knitting on the increase rows, or sorry, knitting on any decrease rows that I needed to decrease to continue the um, raglan shaping, and, um, and then purling back around. And I really only did, I think I did my short rows to the collarbone and then decreased by eight stitches. So I only had a couple decreases in the raglan decreases as I was doing the uh, the short rows. And that worked out perfectly. It added about an inch to the back. Oh, I did 13, 12 or 13 um, short rows, and it added about an inch to the back, which was perfect. And then I uh, just did nine rounds of purl around, knit around, purl around, knit around to do the collar, basically. And I continued when I came to this cable motif, I continued that up into the collar. And then I went back and I did Kitchener stitch in my underarms and it's done. I okay, weave in all the ends, go ahead and block it. And as I blocked it, I stretched out the cable a little bit to make sure that stood out um, and just blocked it to my measurements. And I love it. I think it fits great. Um, I think the only thing I would change if I do it again, which I probably will because I really love this little flourish on the wrist, is I wouldn't continue this up the arm. I think I'd stop. I, I'd bring it in maybe and taper it to a point and then just knit all the way around. The only reason I say that is because now that I've put it on, in, in, in my sketch it didn't seem like it was going to happen, but now that I've put it on, this reminds me of 1980s Adidas tracksuits. If you don't know what they look like, Google 1980s Adidas tracksuits. And you'll be like, oh, yeah. Yeah, it does look like that. And now that I've said it, you won't be able to unsee it. <laughs> so I think I would take this out. And it would be, you know, even simpler. And it's a super easy sweater to knit. Um, you can, you know do the cables however you want at the at the edging for the waist. Um, you can put the flourish or not. It's mainly about taking your measurements and doing your mathematics and making sure you've got the areas of increase and decrease where they need to be. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this. Um, I hope it encourages you to be adventurous with your knitting and give something a try that maybe you wouldn't have otherwise tried. You don't have to do this sweater or this um, this motif, you know, maybe you see something, have seen something on Instagram or on Ravelry or somewhere that you're like, that would be great, but it's not in my measurements. Maybe that will encourage you to make it in your measurements because I don't feel like there's any reason why we need to make our bodies fit the garments. We should make the garments fit our bodies. Um, and this is something that I was talking with the, uh, one of the owners of Uradale Yarns about 
they are the people who I got my yarn from, um, and they are not sponsoring it in any way. I purchased this yarn because I love it and I think it's amazing and I talk all about it in the blog post that they are a fantastic yarn company. They're an ethical yarn company. They have beautiful um, Shetland sheep who provide amazing fleeces and I really love the way they run their company. So you can read about them in the blog post. But she and I were just chatting about how important it is to to embrace the idea of slow fashion and in that because of slow fashion we can create something to fit us something of our own we don't have to go out and buy it off the rack because it's twenty dollars and it's right there and it's cheap and then not be happy with the way it looks on us because it was made to fit this perfect ideal of a woman and um that's just another body shape it's you know every woman is perfect every body is perfect because it's your body so embrace it anyway i'll step off my soapbox and I hope you guys have an amazing day and enjoy your knitting and if you do decide to use the cables or follow the recipe or any of that please let me know I would love to see what you create